going on? It's Sean from Anthem Screen Printing here for part two of our Photoshop for Screen Printing series. Uh, today we're going to be going over the wonderful world of halftones, uh, which you do through bitmapping, you know, either or. Uh, usually most people know for halftones, you used to take an image, just a picture, and you can use that so it turns into a bunch of little tiny black dots that you can burn onto a screen to put onto a shirt or a poster. We're going to show you how to do that, but before that, we are going to show you, we're going to go back to our first video, just our one color, show you a pretty cool trick on how to use halftones to make a one color look like a two. We're going to use bitmapping and a cool little trick to make the handle of the squeegee here look like it's a different color. It's going to make it look like a gray while it stays within just that one color. So when bitmapping an image, any image really, the first thing first, you need to make sure that your size is correct. Um, so go ahead and go to image size. Uh, we have at least that 300 resolution, a width of 12 works for me. Let's go ahead and press OK. And I'll explain in a little bit, but that really is the most important thing with bitmapping is your size has got to be correct. If you do the whole process and then try to change the size, it's going to get all goofy. But anyway, so let's go ahead and take the first step. Press magic wand and to contiguous. Make sure that's selected. And click in that squeegee. And there you go. Everything's selected there. New layer. And you'll see in that blank layer, you got that selection sort of dancing ants around that area, though nothing's really happened. So let's go and pick a color. So go to your foreground color. Um, you know, you can pick whatever. Let's go ahead and go with kind of a lighter gray than what we had, just a little bit. OK. Paint bucket. Click. Voila. So we're going to go ahead and deselect that. And you'll see in that new layer, that's just the color, which is perfect. So we're going to do this whole bitmapping process in an entirely new file. Uh, it just makes it easier, and then we're going to copy-paste it back. So go ahead and make sure you have that layer selected. Select all. Copy. And then, like I said, we're going to go ahead and open up a new file. So what's nice about Photoshop is it's automatically going to size itself to where it needs to be, so don't even stress about that. Paste, and you have that color. So you'll see if we try to bitmap this out right now, we can't. We can't select it. Um, quick fix for that, you're just going to press grayscale. Flatten. Good to go. You're all selected. And this input-output thing, uh, you want to make sure that your output is the same as the input. And this is why you wanted to make sure that your sizing was correct before you even started. So halftone screen. OK. And then for our frequency, to decide that, you're going to take your mesh count and divide it by 5. So we're going to be using a 230 mesh to burn this image, or we're burning it onto a 230, excuse me. Uh, so that divided by 5 is 46, which is a weird number for me. I like 45, and a frequency of 1 isn't going to really you know, screw it up too much. Angle of 22.5, that's the magic number. Go with that for sure. Uh, as for shape, there's a bit of debate between round and ellipse. I like round. Some people like ellipse. Try it out. See what you like. If you go with ellipse, leave us a comment. But we'll go with round for today. And there you go. So we have that color now in just this sort of dot pattern. So we're going to go ahead and select all, copy, and go to our original image. So we're still selected here. Deselect. So you see if you just paste, you just get kind of this image in the middle, which is no good for anyone. So to get that sort of select all just on this small part, you're going to hold command and press inside the square of that layer right there, that little layer thumbnail, and you'll get those dancing ants again. So go ahead and paste. And that's close. That doesn't look that good, though. Um, we delete that bottom layer that we had. And then as for this, you'll see it says normal up here. If you just go down to multiply, that will magically fix that. And there you go. We just bitmap that. That looks more like a gray right over here, except if we get close, you'll see that it is just kind of interspersed black dots. So that's how you do that for an illustration. And obviously this sort of idea can be taken into any sort of realm. It uh, helps you save on screens and limit your colors. All right, so another big thing you can do with bitmapping is make just a photograph, uh, one color, and able to go into something like that. So we pulled off this uh, off of the internet. This is Tim Lincecum, 
He's on the San Francisco Giants, which is where we are. I don't want an update. And uh, we do not own this photo, BT Dubs. All right, so if we go ahead and look at this image size, it's not very big. You got 100 resolution, width of 4. That's no good. So let's go ahead and make this a width of 12. And let's just get wacky with it. Let's make that resolution 900. This is going to be a big image. And while this is loading, I'll tell you why we're going to do that is just because that's going to make those details on the bitmap really fine, which is really nice. So we got that. Slow down. All right, then. And go ahead once again, as we did last time, make that bitmap. Can't select it. So grayscale. And you'll see the actual difference here. You couldn't tell too much with the other one, but everything is going to go black and white or grayscale. All right, then. So there is something with uh, bitmapping images called dot gain. So what's going to happen if we go to our levels? Um, if we were to just bitmap this right now, just like this, it would end up looking more like that. Just a little bit dark, no good. So we're going to go ahead and save for that by moving our grays up quite a bit. So everything's a little bit brighter there. And then when we go to bitmap, have our same thing, output the same as the input. We're going to do the 230 again, so we've got that 45, the 22.5, round shape, OK. It's going to load up a little bit, and there you go. Looks great, looks about the same, but if you get close, you're going to see it's all just those wonderful blacks and whites that are going to burn oh so well onto a screen. And because we had that resolution pumped up to a 900, we you know you get a lot more detail. If we were to do just a 300, it'd show up fine, but might be a little bit more chunky. Um, photos are great; a lot of people really like them. And you know that's that's the basics. There you go. So if you have any other questions, go ahead and leave us a comment below. We'd love to answer it for you. Always keep watching. We're going to keep coming out with more of these. I think next time we're going to do color separations and a uh, and live tracing as well. If you have any other suggestions on videos you'd like to see, also be sure to message us or leave us a comment. Thanks. Be well. Have a great day. Later.